I would like to turn it over to some use case applications of item types and have Jeff Askey show a little bit of this implemented at an ORD level. And then we're going to jump back to the iModel publications and to the iTwin topics. So what we'll talk about next is in an ORD platform, uh, as Craig said, you know, separate your item types by your, uh, by your platform. And in ORD to assign your item types to leverage your templates, you assign them in your feature definition. And for in your template library, you have your, your mesh components or your solids, and then you have your linear, your template points to produce your linear elements. So you want to assign your, you can assign your item types per those features. And one new thing that's to uh, the latest release in 21R1 is you can assign multiple item types to a single feature definition which we'll show here in just a little bit. And past uh, versions, you weren't able to do this one at a time. So then when you apply your template per template drop or linear template, or maybe even a civil cell, the item types get triggered when those templates are created. So we'll jump to into ORD and as stated, we'll, you set your, we're going to look at the Explorer over here. We're going to look at the Open Road Standards, and in a little bit here, we're going to look at items. In, in Open Road Standards, this is where your feature definitions per, say, the mesh is where you would set your item type or make your item type assignments. So you, as you can see here, this has... This feature doesn't have any items assigned to it, where this one does. This one has multiple, so this has three items assigned to it. And when you do the drop down here, you can, what you do is you bring up the list of items that are, that are available, and then you can assign them accordingly per your feature. So when that feature is, is, is created, you'll see them on your properties. And then fill in your description with, with, with properties there, and then it'll, it'll auto input as you go. Then the linear part of it, you want to, because of the points that you have in your template library, is under the linear category, but under your template points. This is what gets associated to in your template library, and then Here's where you assign your items there. So when your template is drawn and created, it becomes need to get auto assigned, as you can see in the properties here. We'll look at the linear part that has those item types, the corresponding item type assigned to it. In a 2D realm, in a linear part of it, having them assigned as well. In the, in the straight line, not the template points, but if you're actually creating some geometry and that feature has an item type assigned to it, when you draw that feature, you'll see that the item type is assigned to it already. But the change here is that look at your tool settings, is that when you when it has something assigned to it, your tool settings actually have displays your properties, and you can assign them as you go, as you draw them. We'll create them in a 2D. So as you can see, it shows up in the properties. Now, if you're going to extract, if you're going to draw your geometry in 2D and have your item types assigned, and you're doing some extraction of here, you're going to have don't want to extract your 2D geometry and your templates because you might have duplicate information. You might give you some erroneous uh, uh, quantities. So then after they're applied in your file, you can they become a local standard. So instead of having your, your libraries, they become an actual part of the file. Like you 
you know, like a level. A level is available until you use it, that it becomes part of the file. That's the same concept as with these with the item types and your features. So your features become part of your file. So in, in order to uh, in, enable some changes, you make the changes to the local um, property, they become automatic. So when you change them in the properties in your standards for the active model, they become, they automatically update within your template. Now, to ensure that your quantities and everything else gets updated, uh, it's, it's not a bad idea to process corridor on those templates as well. So if you go to the active file and your feature definitions, let's say go to a mesh and let's look at some asphalt and let's look at our base course here. Since it is live, now we our property is not ghosted out anymore. This one has two items. If I were to add an item, it'll add it in my properties. And now if I go over and select one of those in my file, it already updated my, my template or my instance. But keep in mind, this not only does just the one I selected here, it did every one of them in here, including, you know, a civil cells, linear template, and or even a corridor template drop. So that is a very powerful, but very influential as well. So because when you update it in your standard, the local standard, it becomes part of the file. So just keep that in mind that what you're what you're doing is now every instance of that for this case here that base course it added that item now what it didn't do is it didn't fill in the properties of it that we're, we'll talk about how we can uh, isolate those here in a little bit to know which ones we're, we're looking at in the file so let's look at how we can find our elements in our file so this is where we can use a, a, a different uh, browser. There's a, one called items. And what you do is you can isolate in the active view your different elements that are assigned those item types. And there's also an additional details and then you can look at the properties of things and there's different uh, capabilities here. And even to go even farther, you can search for certain keywords and or whatnot, even properties, and it'll display in your file. Go back to ORD here. Close my properties. I'm just gonna I'm gonna use my view two here, which is the 3D aspect of it. So you can do it in either view. When you go to isolate and look at your different try and find and, and look at your different items and elements, it acts upon your active view. <clears throat> so in our browser, in our explorer over here, we're going to look at the items browser, and that's going to list all the items that are in the active file, not the ones that are available. Those you go you see in the library, like Craig pointed out, but this is what's in the file. So if you select one, for, for example, and I have my properties open, you'll see it's going to list in the properties all these different instances of it, and you can click on them individually and see the properties of them as well. So you can, through the properties, you can see the different items. And if you see in the right-hand view, it's actually highlighting those items. If the level's turned on, the level's display is on, it's actually going to highlight it for you. And as you can see, it's jumping around there. So you can visibly see where things are at. And everything's graphical and in, in, right to in your fingertips in the, in the file. But now I want to see just those. So, for example, the sidewalk. If I right click on here and go isolate, this is my active view. So, there's everything that has that item assigned to it. And you can just go from one to one, go to the next one, isolate, and your view will change accordingly. It doesn't turn, turn any levels on or off, it just isolates them in that, in that view. If you get it back, right click and hit clear isolate on any one of these, and it'll clear this and bring it back to the original uh, viewpoint here. So 
And here you can click on each individual one. And as you can see there, it's jumping around. It's highlighting here as well where I'm at, which one I have selected. Now, since these are bold here and in the properties, I can change them if I so choose. So say this one here, this is not curb and gutter. This was misapplied. This means this is just, just a concrete curb. And then you can change it here, and then it changes it in the, in the element itself. One thing about this here, too, is if you highlight the main up here, see where the description of the properties, it varies. If it's bold, you can change it. So you could actually, it has everything in a sense selected here. I can change the, this property, in this case, the description, on every item that I have selected. It's very powerful what you can do. So you can quickly come through here and look through and see what is assigned where. And it, it works in the 2D as well. So, but only the 3D elements or all the only the elements that have the item assigned to it will display. So if I have my 2D active and I go to isolate, but I don't have my 3D model displayed, I won't see it until it is displayed. So it's just the nuances between going between the views and knowing which view is active will act upon that. So we have in here as well, there's the details. So if I were to right click and go details, there's a new dialog pops up here, new information. So these are the details of everything for this for this instance occurred. And you can cycle through, go through, and it will pop its properties, it will highlight it in the file. You can copy out of here, paste into a spreadsheet. So you can copy copy out of here into another platform, another application. In addition to, we have a search capability. So for instance, uh, let's look at curve. There's different, two different um, instances of curving here. So if I go just in the search, I type in, um, say, 62-50110, and then it adds it to my search down here. Now I can isolate and get properties for that as well. On those. I have them here. I can isolate those. Those. This is where everything that has the description or item number in this case of that value. So you can quickly do a, a, a visible, visual check of where things are at, and you can make changes as well. So if you highlight it and you have it in your selection know which one it is, and if you need to make a change, so say you're over here and it's mislabeled, you can change the property of it right on your screen. One other place you can be assigned items per our features. Now, if the feature has the assignment to it, like we did here, there's also you can leverage or element templates, for example, but this one not necessarily be your ORD geometry tools. If you have, you can assign an item in your element template as well. This is where basic drafting comes in, places smart line with that element template. Your, your tool settings doesn't change like it did on the geometry application layer part, but it does, assign that item per that microstation element. So there's multiple ways to uh, create elements automatically with item types attached. And I want to show just a couple other, uh, what I would consider use cases. On uh, Now just a few other cool tidbits on the item types I think that is notable. So this is a completely different use case. This is more Utilities infrastructure base is something that I've been dabbling around a little bit in as far as 
how to manage, how most efficient to manage item type data. And, and this happens to be a, a, a relay device, more of a protection device in the utilities arena. And you'll see there's, there's quite an extensive library on here in itself, just more of an asset management front. What is the device? You know, what is its name? Uh, and in some parameters about it. But, but what's, what's pretty slick about some of the properties you can do on this is you'll notice a color change here. So if I want to, if I want to take and, and say, Hey, this is a proposed or, or new or something to that extent, you can trigger property changes as well. And this thing, again, I cannot stress the power that has been induced to MicroStation and other, other platform products by item types. It just really expands, you know, how one can implement uh, in different ideas. So that's one little case. And then I, I like to show something pretty, pretty slick here. Uh, this is just the reports command out of base MicroStation. And you can define reports to libraries, right? This is another DGN library resource. And you can configure your reports. You can group them. You can do a lot of real basic kind of data functions right within MicroStation. So if you want tabular data on your screen, you can use this command. You can define your reports. And it is it is dynamic to the point where, um, you know, if you if you choose to do something like I'll just fudge up in here for for everybody. But, you know, if you want to come in and say, I want to make, you know, five of these or whatever, copy them. Right. Make a bunch of bunch of duplicates, what have you. And that library or table can be refreshed dynamically. That is, to me, just hugely powerful. You can start to self-check yourself. You, know, you can check what you're doing. Um, as long as you've got your data acclimated right, you can see you know, which one is what by name. Uh, so it really has a, a ton of value on that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.